in physics, you'll find that we often consider questions where people often have stuff drop on them. It's part of the humor of being a physicist. But more likely, we consider these kind of situations because, again, um, falling objects is only subjected to gravity and they have constant acceleration as they fall, which makes it easy to analyze. And you know, there's some kind of useful life and death situation and hopefully you care a little more. And this is one such case. Uh, here we have a hiker, which stands down here, probably looking upwards. And he heard a rock break loose and is falling towards him. What he know is, let's call this time zero is equal to zero. Uh, we'll call this height where the hiker is, ignoring his height just to make it simple. Call that y equals zero, positive upwards. And here, the rock is initially at 105 meters up above our y equals zero. But he can't see it right away. He's still looking very intensely. A little later, the rock is no longer up as high because it's falling. So this is y1, we don't know what it is. t1 is 1.5 seconds. So this is for answering part A. And then, and then finally, for answering part B is how much time does he have? So t2, one know how much time does he have before he is squashed underneath the rock? So if he squashed underneath the rock, then the rock would be at his height, which is zero. So that's what we know. And throughout all this time, of course, again, the acceleration is constant because it's due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared downwards. That's why it's negative, because we have to find positive upwards like that. So that's a situation. Let's go and calculate what we need to know. For part A, we want y1. Because acceleration is constant, we have our kinematics formula, so this is for part A. y1 is equal to y0 plus v0t plus one half a t square. t1, of course, given that t0 is in fact at zero. So y1 is equal to 105 meters plus my initial speed, which is zero, times 1.5 seconds, plus one half negative 9.81 times 1.5 seconds square. Low calculator work, you'll find that we'll get this number. And so for part A, the rock will be 94 meters above his head when he sees it. Moving on, part B. Part B, we want to know how much time he has between when he sees the rock at 1.5 seconds and when the rock gets to where he is. Well, the rock gets to where he is at time equals T2, but then he only sees it at T1. So he doesn't get the whole T2 to react, only between T1 and T2. So that's where the minus sign comes in. But let's find out T2 first. In order to find out t2, we know that y2, which is 0, it's equal to, we'll start from the beginning because the algebra is easier in the beginning, and we don't know v1. We'll relate the things that we know, and the little hidden bit here is actually, this is from 0 to 2, not just, not from 1 to 2, just 0 to 2 because we're relating time 0 and time 2. a remains the same, so we know if this is zero, it's equal to 105 meters plus zero height, which is fortunate because if we do have a V zero, then we would have to use the quadratic formula times T two square. So that goes away. Rearranging, we get that t2 square is equal to negative 105 divided by one half 
negative 9.81 meters per second squared. This is, of course, meters. Again, cancels out. Second square goes on top, but we don't want the square. We want the square root. Technically, it's plus or minus, but we know we're only interested in the positive root. Negative sign cancels out, so we don't, we're not trying to take the square root of a negative number. And we get that we have square root of 2.4286 second square, which turns out to be 4.6297 or so seconds. But again, we're not interested in T2, we're interested in T2 minus T1. That's the amount of time he has to react. So we take that second and minus 1.5 seconds to give us 3.1297 seconds. So final answer, the hiker has 3.13 seconds to move.